There we go. Hello, everybody. We're going to take a look at your clock animations. So I put a buffer week in between the first week and this week so that you would have time to get used to animation, follow something a little bit more rote, like a bouncing ball, and think about what you wanted to do for your clock. And so hopefully that helped a little bit. Maybe it threw you off. I don't know. But we're going to take a look at what everyone did. I'll start with the folders up here. Actually, I'll start by refreshing the folder just in case we get stuff. All right, so Elias. Let's take a look. Oh, I'm, I'm not sharing my screen with you guys. I'm sorry. But you guys do have access to the folder at least so that you could. There you go. So now I'm sharing my screen with you guys. I was already recording though. All right. So Elias got like uh, kind of a knight helmet and armor spinning around there all the little discs spinning and the clock hands going crazy. As long as it keeps the time, I guess that's fine at the top of the hour. It looks like it loops pretty well too. It all goes back to the place it starts at, so that's good. Because I see some crazy stuff happening with the torso and the arms. So I was a little bit worried, but it seems to eventually resolve nicely. Cool. Do we have Elias in here? We don't. So I'll just assume that this is what he was aiming for and he accomplished it. Uh, the ticking of the, the second's hand looks appropriate. That's one thing that I'm, I'm gonna be looking out for is like when your clock changes time, does it just smoothly slide between positions or does it go tick, tick, tick? Because that would be something that is higher detail and uh, shows a little bit more care in the animation. Cool, you guys have any comments for Elias? Nope. I wonder if he meant to have the uh, hard edge shading on the helmet. Um, I don't know. I didn't. I'm not really too concerned about it. Like modeling's not really our our thing in here. But it does sort of match the the faceted nature of these discs down here. That's what I was thinking. Is it looks like an old RPG game? Yeah, yeah. So possibly, maybe not, but it's okay. Uh, Elias, if you didn't mean to do that, what you got to do is select the edges and then um, choose soften edge. Uh, I do it with the marking menus. I do everything with the marking menus. I don't recall you being in my uh, classes though. So I'll just demonstrate it real quick if I want a uh, sphere here. The sphere by default looks smooth, but if I grab all of the edges, so I'm just holding right click, edge, select. Now I do shift right click and do soften edges. You can either toggle, which is this one, soften or harden. So I'm gonna just do harden. Now I've got, if I can deselect it, a disco ball. Then if I just want to selectively soften some, this is just in case you don't know, I'm not sure if there was a mistake or not. I'm gonna do soften, and there we go. And uh, I believe that a harden and soften doesn't sometimes appear as history that you have to delete, but I just go ahead and delete history anyway after I do it, just in case there was something wrong. So that's just in case you didn't mean to do it, but it looks good. Thank you very much. Let's look at Andrews. Andrew told me he was having a little bit of trouble doing the play blast and then eventually got it to work. But I noticed that the play blast size is two gigabytes, which is gigantic. Um, the issue there, Andrew, and I played it, it works properly. I'll take a look in just a second. The issue there is that you didn't choose the right uh, encoding. So when you make the play blast, right click on the timeline, choose play blast, but hit the option box. Then choose encoding cram. The cram uh, option seems to be the best one. It results in the smallest possible files. I think I had um, IYUV worked and this one also YUV worked, but cram is the best one so long as you crank the quality up to 100%. And then as long as your scale's at 100%, you should be all set. You're gonna get a file in the size of megabytes rather than gigabytes at that point. But let's go ahead and take a look at the animation. We've got our alarm clock. Ring. <laughs> I kind of like the jumping around crazy. Ring, 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 ring. Cool. This this hammer looks like it's going absolutely nuts, which is cool. And then the jiggling of the uh, bells is another good step. And having this hopping back and forth like that is pretty fun. Cool. I think you probably could have uh, thought a little bit more about how the hopping was supposed to work 
because right now it just sort of looks like it levitates in air and rotates back and forth, which is kind of lazy, to be honest. In fact, if I put my uh, cursor over the center hub while it's playing, we'll see that the clock never moves side to side at all. It just goes up and down and rotates. That's not really how hopping works. Hopping is, you know, directed at the feet. So what you would have to do is move it over and rotate it and hit the ground at some point, and then very carefully either rotate it and move it so that it hinged from that point or move it back across again. And that would be um, something that you could do to simulate that hopping and it would give it a little bit more character. Um, right now it's just a little bit vague. Uh, one other thing I want to point out just because it's it's pretty odd. This hand here, we'll just say it's the seconds hand, is moving very, very far, much farther than a clock would uh, move on the second ticks. Um, so you've got uh, 12 you know, numbers going around here. And so 1 12th of this would probably be about here, which means this is five seconds long. So you'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get from here. So if you're going to have three seconds tick by, it should really only be pointing about here to start 2, 1, 0. Okay. So be careful about that because that's really weird. Also, when it struck top of the hour, the hour hand moved, and that doesn't make any sense either. So try to think about the reality of the object and make sure it works the way the real thing should, as far as that's possible, and then caricature and have fun. Okay. So you got to get the, the basic stuff down first, like how a door hinges or you know how a boat floats in water before you're going to make it expressive and fun. All right. Thank you. Uh, Miguel, let's take a look at yours because you're the only play blast I see in here. And then we'll see if we got to look at the other ones in Maya. <laughs> there he goes, doing the robot. <laughs> it's almost like a real toy because he's like very, very slow. I think that you could speed this up a bit. Yeah, I timed it out so each action is a second because the, the robot's oh. arm doing the hang okay. is supposed to be like the ticking seconds. Oh, is it? Oh, Yeah, it's timed out to a second. Oh, I see. Okay. But then but every yeah, action slow. is a second. Right? Every action yeah. is a second. Okay. So that is not something I want you to do anymore. That's a really monotonous way to animate. Um, instead, get video reference go by the timing of it. Even if you can't go by the physical actions, go by the timing of it, up to recording yourself miming the robot on a camera phone or something like that. I think you probably have that capability, right? You don't have to share it with us. Yeah, I'm not embarrassed. Okay, so that way you're gonna get good timing because here's the thing, timing in animation is like music, right? And I, you guys can hear me clap if I do, right? Did you, right right there. you hear it? No, I didn't hear anything. No. Oh no, okay. So maybe I can't do that. I'll just I'll just vocalize it. So if the beat and the music is like dun 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 dun, that's repetitive and monotonous, right? Um, it's the same spacing, the same note, the same length of note, and so it very quickly grates on our nerves and becomes boring. Even if you change that to like da 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 that's the same timing just the notes longer or shorter it's already better so for timing and animation getting an interesting beat is much more important than having an even beat a lot of the time there is a um, tradition in animation which is animating to music which is a musical cadence right then you do have a rhythm but if you listen to music the notes never just fall on the on the beat. They fall all over the place, sometimes crammed in there, sometimes stretched out. And so for interesting music of any kind, we need parts that are fast, parts that are slow, parts that are quiet, parts that are complicated. And so that's what we should do when we're trying to animate something is get that variety. Um, what could we do for your robot? Let's see. So he swings his arms and then reaches up and then gets his head. Oh, and he grabs his head and rotates it and then rotates his legs and rotates his head back. Okay. So what we could have then is the first part should be to the clock, like you said. So tick, tock, tick with the, the arms. 
then he should more quickly reach up to his head, stop and hold, and then twist his head over, twist his legs over, hold, twist his head back, twist his legs back, hold. That way we've got bursts of activity and we've got moments of stillness. And I think that would make it far more interesting. You know what we could do? I could just download yours and I could scoot around the timing. Be pretty yeah, easy. I was just trying to be, uh, I guess, clever with it, making every, like the, the robot account for the second hand. That would be cool. And maybe a way to express that would to be have it do its actions real fast and hold still every second. And then we would understand that what he is is the ticking clock. So I get that idea. And I think there's a way to execute that idea. But right now it's not reading that way. Uh, so let's see this guy. Okay, so you've got action, action, action. So here he is. So every second for you is 30 frames. Good. And I'm going to have to reduce the size of the timeline because it's so long. There we go. So now I can actually see a little bit. So you're saying every action is one second. To start off with, it's not, though. Yeah, it is. Because uh, it starts at the, the uh, second. So it's a pendulum, right? So when it hits the bottom, it's the second. Oh. Oh, OK. I get what and you're saying. And then doing 30s, yeah. To here, OK. Or I guess it only hits 130 because there's only two seconds. Is it still? OK, yeah, it is one second. OK, it was just hard to for me to understand that. I get it. Um, so let's see, what could we do? So let's leave this part alone, right? And then you've got this reach up portion. And it does hold still. So I'm going to have the reach up part. Let's just see the rest of this so I can slide everything. And I'm going to make that reach up part happen quick and then hold reach stop and then this part where he adjusts his hands i'm going to speed way up all the way up to there okay so he reached up held so now i need this part to squeeze in and this part to squeeze in i don't even know what the timing is i'm picking here i'm just making it faster okay so now he's got that and then he twists, and I'll make the, the second part of the twist follow very shortly. So we'll go twist, 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 and hold. Whoa. OK, so your holds I want to make longer, like that much. Is this a hold, too? Yeah, there's a little sixth of a second hold, or fifth of a second hold between each motion. I'm going to make that like half a second to a whole second. Just bigger is all. So I'm squeezing some things together and lengthening other things out. Okay, so then he twists back. We'll speed this up. So he twists back quick and then twists his legs back quick. Okay. And then I think that's going to be a hold too. Okay, so we'll lengthen out the hold. Like that. Okay, so let's just see how that first part plays now. Move, 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 grab. Zip, zip. It's still very, very slow. Okay, maybe I didn't know what I was looking at. Okay, that one's really slow for some reason. I don't want that to be slow. I want that to be quick. This holds. That zip, zip. There we go. Zip, zip. All right, let's see. Does that seem a little bit more interesting now? Yeah, well, I think it, it needs some fine tuning to oh, not look. So. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm just shoving time around. Like, I'm not even thinking about it. But anything is better than monotonous, usually. Like, monotonous is, is the way to make the audience bored. And we never want to make the audience bored. Um, you can sometimes get away with uh, monotonous if there's another character reacting to it. Kind of like Zootopia, where the, the sloth was taking forever, and the other characters are bouncing around and like antsy on our behalf. But we want to avoid even timing, um, usually whenever we can, unless you've got a very strong reason. Okay. Does 
that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, Yang, were you able to make a play blast? Uh, yeah, but it's uploading in five minutes. Oh, my God. Okay, we'll just download your, your file. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, make sure that you do upload it for uh, the homework's sake. Yeah, it's uploading. It's just going to take five minutes. It, how big is it? Is it, like, huge? It's 500 me megabytes. Okay, that's a little it bit just... large, but I guess it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's the smaller one that I could get it for. Jeez, okay. I think I'm going to have to zoom in on that little robot. <laughs> What's he doing? Doing all sorts of things. Okay. Let me let me first address the, the clock pendulum because it doesn't look like it's got the right timing, even though maybe it does. Did you lock things so that we can't? Okay, yeah, you did. So I see keyframes at the right moments. Let's see. So this first keyframe... For, you don't have a keyframe on zero, and you should if you want it to move for the entire animation. So right now it holds still for a second. And then, ah, okay. You've got your I, pendulum. I, yeah, it's supposed to be starting when you reach the top of hmm? Oh, no, the pendulum is the part that, that powers the clock. Well, kind of. but So the pendulum is always swinging, whether the clock is striking the hour or not. Did you know that? That's that's the timekeeping mechanism. So anyway, um, you do need a keyframe at zero. So what you've got is half as many keyframes as you need. You've got, or um, they're they're twice as slow as you need to. You've got one whole second for the pendulum to swing from left to right. It's actually that it should make an entire pass in one second. So it's going twice as slow as it should. So if I take these and scale them down to where they're twice as quick as they were, something like this. And again, I'm just kind of approximating because I'm just moving time around. So something like this is how fast your pendulum needs to go. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, something like that. So that's how a pendulum works, is that if you're starting on the left, for instance, or starting on the right, it should go left, right in one second. Okay. All right, so let's go take a look at the robot then. Hello, robot. <laughs> He's got some kind of funny... <laughs> gesturing and stuff he's doing. That's cool. So Yang, how did you decide on, on these actions for the robot? Uh, Yang's on the call anymore. Oh no, what happened to him? I offended him with my, my pendulum talk or his uh, internet was overloaded by uploading or something. Well, I'll, I'll talk to him in recording. This is cool and funny. I think that it sort of looks to me like you just kind of decided to make an action figure do this stuff as opposed to like acting it out by hand, which is okay. It's a clock. It's a little toy figure. It didn't have to be like person accurate or anything like that. But I wonder if you got animation timing from reference. Uh, it tends to really show when a person doesn't do that because the timing either is far too quick or far too slow. It tends to be pretty obvious. So that's my suspicion at least although the actions are pretty entertaining and fun. So there we go. Yeah, I see him typing. I'm reviewing your stuff for when you watch the video later. It's okay. Don't worry about it. All right, and then let me just take a quick look. Did the clock ever move? I did kind of want it to go tick tock. At least once. Oh, it did. Okay, it did the the striking the top of the hour part, which is fine. It's a very very slow hitting the top of the hour. I gotta say, it looks like it takes a half a second to move into position. That's pretty ponderous for like a a hand on a clock. I would say if you want to hit this at this moment, then I would only have it take like a maximum of ten frames maybe. Probably less. Let's see how that feels. 
yeah, a maximum of 10 frames. Like that's the slowest I would make it go, which is a third of a second. If we try to make it like a quarter of a second, which is hard to divide in uh, 30, but yeah. That's a bit better. That feels better to me. You can even go faster than that. So here's four frames. But at that point, you're going to need probably some anticipation. So two frames beforehand, I do a small backward rotation. So let's have it, uh, I'll have it hold to position right here. Two frames before, I have it go back just a little bit and then it goes forward. So that'll at least alert people to look out. Here it comes, it's gonna move. Okay, so just a little snappier, I'd say, with that. All right, thank you, Yang. Sorry that your internet, you know, crapped out on us. Uh, hopefully you'll get it right here, but if you come back on later, then I'll probably just reiterate this stuff to you. Um, Gunter's here. Are you able to talk yet, Gunter? Oh, I I'm able to talk. Okay. Been... Did you hear what I said earlier? I was asking you to make a play blast. Oh. Yeah. What, what's a play blast? A play blast was in the video. I talked about making it, and then I referred to another video where I explicitly show how to make play blasts. Oh. Did you watch the lecture? I watched um was beginning and okay and things happened oh, all right sorry. did you read the assignment because it is also written in the assignment to give me a play blast i am so sorry okay here's the two things to do actually view the lecture as if it's a class and read the assignment because the assignment gives you information shame shame okay but what you could do right now open up maya make a play blast for me um, you could do that later on today there's a video that details how to make one. The only thing I'll caution you about, which I've told a couple people now, is when you make one, definitely change this encoding to cram, otherwise you're gonna get a gigantic file. Okay? All right, let's take a look. All right. So, okay, I don't think any of you guys knows how a traditional clock works because uh, everyone's doing weird things with their pendulums and their hands and stuff. So the, the pendulum, is supposed to just swing back and forth the entire time because it's the timekeeping mechanism for the clock. And it's supposed to make one full pass per second. So if it starts on the left, it's supposed to go right left in 30 frames, just like that quickly. Um, it is charming that it's kind of animating along with the top of the hour, but it's not how the pendulum works. Yeah, reference is key. You gotta look at a clock actually doing this stuff. Let's look at the top of the hour thing though. Ooh, okay, another pedantic weird thing about how clocks work. That is not how the hands of the clock work. The small one is the hour hand. The big one is the minute hand. You've got the, the hour hand working as the second hand and the minute hand working as, mm, the minute hand working as, I don't know what it's working as. Maybe it is a minute hand still. But then we have no hour hand, something like that. So not, not how an analog clock works. Um, I do like that you got the ticks in there, though. So for this one, tick, 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 tick. That's good. That's good detail animation, and it makes it a lot more interesting to watch. It's just, as far as how a clock actually works, not what happens. Uh, let's take a look at the bird. Tweet, 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 tweet. Cool. Yeah. I think that looks like an appropriate amount of time for that to be happening. A good speed. I like his little eyes getting bigger and smaller. And the action looks pretty good. Cool. One more time. All right. Yeah. I'm happy with the bird. It's just weird physical things about the, the clock that are, that are throwing me off. But uh, yeah, I like those actions. I think with the limited uh, kind of puppet that you made, you're using it really well. Very good. All right. So what needs fixing? Um, so the that? pendulum is supposed to swing uh, one full swing. So as in starting on one side, going to the other, and returning in 30 frames, one second. Oh, actually, you're you're animating at 24 frames right now. Uh, it's supposed to be. Uh, Were you aware of that? I thought I changed it to 30, but I guess I didn't. I don't okay. know what happened. Here's what you do now. Don't move it. Just leave it at 24, right? Just keep in mind that one second is 24 frames, okay? But once you've done this much work in the animation, 
it's a lot of work to fix it correctly. Um, the lazy fix is to just change this field, but then what happens is either your time, your key ticks don't move, in which case the animation is going to play a lot faster, or yeah, a lot faster, which is what happened, or it tries to correct them for you, in which case it goes to subframes, it goes to like decimal numbers, which we don't want. So just leave it alone, just don't move it. But the pendulum, for the entire duration of your animation, should be swinging a full uh, left-right swing in a single second. So let me put this back to frame one. There we go. So we're going to start in frame one, put this on one side like that, key it, and then by the time we get to 24, we return to this position, which means on 12, we would be on this side. Uh, there's also something I go over in the video to repeat this single animation uh, segment over and over so that you don't have to key it. So when you do view the lecture again, um, that section will show you how to use the infinity to cycle it so that it just goes tick tock, tick tock forever, and you don't have to do anything other than these three keyframes. Okay. okay. So the other part was um, these hands are not moving like how they should. The hour hand should almost not move at all. The minute hand should just go tick one time. If you want a seconds hand, it would be an even smaller, thinner hand than these two. Do you want a seconds hand? Well, my idea was that this is like a fast, uh, like a, um, what's the term? Uh, like it's going in fast motion. Oh, oh, you're like, oh, like fast forwarding time. Yes. That's pretty confusing since we don't have any frame of reference for how fast time is going. It just uh, kind of looks like a, a clock moving fast right now. Yeah, that was the point. It's no, supposed to be... No, I mean a clock moving fast while time passes normally. Uh, like for some reason the clock's mechanism is broken and it's going tick, 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 tick. Right? Okay. So a, a lot of you guys are overthinking this, right? It's a clock. Clocks do a certain thing. Just make it do that thing. Don't make it, you know, do all sorts of other weird things. It's just going to confuse people, you know? They're just going to wonder why the clock is doing that. Okay. And then also time stops when it hits the top of the hour for some reason. So like, it's no longer going to tick. It just stops ticking. Just time stops. That's kind of weird, you know? So if that was a second hand, we'd want it to move just like you have it once per second. But then it should continue through striking top of the hour because the seconds don't halt. You know, a stopwatch. Now nah, you don't need reference for this. You know how long a second is just out of numbers, right? One movement per second. Um, for an analog clock, though, you'd probably have to just look up a video of how an analog clock moves if you don't have one in the house. All right. Okay. And a play blast, please. Thank you. All right, I don't think we got Yang back. Can I put this in the uh, revised vision or? No, nah, just one? just put it in the normal homework folder. Okay. Uh, oh, if you're going to change things about the, f nah, for now, just put it in the homework folder. If it goes in today, then that's fine. Okay. All right, so that's everybody's file that I got. Any questions from you guys about how the assignment was structured or what is expected, that sort of thing? All good. Do I only check, uh, 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 turn in the uh, video file, or do I turn in both? Uh, go ahead and revise the, the Maya file as well. Just replace your existing Maya file. OK? OK. Cool. Thank you. All right. So what are we doing next? We are going to move into Unity. And we're going to start animating 2D characters in Unity. I didn't open this beforehand, so I'm just going to do it right now. Just to hop over here, show you that all this stuff exists. Uh, by the way, there's a dedicated Play Blast section on uh, the Canvas modules, although that video is up on YouTube as well, so you can get it either way. Um, so yeah, we're going to start doing game engine animation. We're going to animate um, stuff inside of Unity. Lecture is already up. You can go view that where I demonstrate how animation works inside of Unity and show how to do it. And also I've linked a few other different tutorials because 
this is a subject that you might be interested in so you might want to do a little research uh, you may notice I've got a couple Bracky's uh, videos linked down there because his stuff is great uh, one is just showing how the animator works along with scripting the other one is demonstrating skeletal animation which is something that we're going to get into next time but not right now yeah I know Bracky's will be missed I I'm so sad that he stopped making videos because they were excellent uh, the other two are um, tutorials directly from Unity. So there's a bunch of um, way down in the weeds things that you can do with the animation uh, uh, menus inside of Unity. And there's lots and lots of tutorials on that stuff, if you want to know any of them, just to be helpful. And then there's also the manual for animation, which just sort of describes how things work um, in detail. So if you're confused about any of the information that I present, um, hop over to the uh, the manual here and go through these different sections to kind of read up about um, what is exactly happening if you need that. It is kind of complicated and we're not using all of the structures in here though. So approach that one with caution for now because there's a lot of stuff that can be done and we're definitely not using all that capability. Okay. The assignment is going to be to animate three provided clips on a Unity package that I've put in our uh, Google Drive folder already. So if we come out here to our um, class listing and go to examples and resources, this robotanimations.unity package, you need to download that and import it into an empty scene in order to do the assignment. Okay, so that's what you need right there. It's got everything in it, and I demonstrate in the video how to. Uh, load that and how to export your Unity package because I will be collecting a Unity package from you guys as homework. That's how you're going to turn your assignment into me. Okay, so be sure to view all of that information because if you don't, um, you won't know what to give me. I'm just going to make that folder right now so that we have it. This one is um, robot animation. So that'll be homework number four. Okay, any questions about that information other than how do I do all that, which can be answered by the video lecture? How about this? Do you guys all have Unity installed? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, and if you didn't, you can come up to this basic information, where do I get software, and Unity is listed here. Okay, just in case. Is there a certain version that we should be downloading? Ooh, that's a good question. I think I was using the most recent one, but let me just pop open Unity Hub to check. Um, 2009.4.4F1. So 29, or sorry, 2019.4.4F1. I'm gonna write that in the in the Discord uh, chat channel and pin it, just so that you guys have somewhere to look for it. So 2019.4.4 F1. Uh, when you guys install Unity, that's not going to be an option that you need to worry about because when you install Unity now, you just install Hub, and Hub is the way to launch multiple versions of Unity. So the Hub version is different. Don't worry about that. Um, but the Unity version, this one, would be the most optimal. If it ended up giving you one that's uh, of a later version, it's not really going to change anything. It'll just complain at you a little bit and say, do you want to convert these things? You just say yes. But everything should still work properly. OK. Any questions, comments, concerns, things that you need demonstrated, problems that you struggled with mightily and don't know the answer to? Uh, hold on. When I was doing my uh, animation, mm -hmm. ah, crap! I can't remember if it was the if it was the second hint or the actual robot I was having problems with. Do you remember? We just run over real quick, so maybe I can remember. Yeah. So here we go. Do you remember? Oh wait, no, never mind. I remember in the video because uh, I was thinking about how it ends on the same. So the first frame and the last frame are the same but you showed us that we could just play blast without that last frame to make it loop better. Yes. Although in your case, a little pause there is not going to be noticeable at all. 
but yeah, we can play Blast without that. It's more noticeable in very short looping animations. Like if I just did the pendulum and we were staring right at it and the only frames in the in the clip were left right, then it would it would probably be critical that I remove that last frame so that it loops correctly. Yeah. Oh, that remind, uh, so when he twists his body as well, so the legs twist and that twists everything else. So I count. I have a counter spin to the torso, uh, and there's like a little jitter there when you play it out. Uh, at what time does that happen? Uh, when the legs turn. Oh, you're talking about like the head moving? Yeah, the whole the whole upper body like twitches a little bit. You see that? Yeah, I see that. Okay, so what that's probably attributable to is not the exact same amount of movement. This is the one that rotates, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, the legs okay. rotate 90 so, degrees. So it moves 90, and then this moves 90. OK, so what's happening? Uh, frame 200 and frame 224, frame 200, frame 224. Hmm. Let's look in the graph editor. And I just did linear uh, tangents. So. Which is the simplest kind, so that's the safest that you could possibly have. Yep, linear tangents. OK. And then linear tangents. Hmm. This might be due to a slightly off-center object. So which, which one? OK, so the upper body is the child of the lower body, right? Yeah. It may be that the upper body is not quite centered properly. That's going to be my guess. Let's look in a top view to see. Well, it certainly looks centered. Oh, no, I think it is slightly off. From, oh, could yeah, this see, yeah, there's the a bottom? little center of it right there. I think that's the platform he's on. Oh, you're right. You're that's right. That's okay. So we're just okay. So here's that's the lower body. Oh, it did shift a little. Okay, yeah. There we go. So the lower body, the center of pivot, is a little bit forward. Ah, there we go. That's gonna be what accounts for it. Although, what I'll say is that in playback, I don't think that that was visible. I mean, I see an adjustment on the pixel level just because I've got this selected. But as far as making the animation play badly, it's not. Yeah, it just bothered me and I didn't know what the hell was going on. Yeah, so the, the solution is that, but the the real solution is, eh, a problem that small, don't worry about it. It's not... Well, fixing the pivot should work, right? Fixing the pivot should work, as long as we do it on frame one. So... On frame one, come down here, find that object. Because you didn't then translate anything. Right. OK, so then I'll snap it to vertex just in this direction. And now it should rotate about that axis. See, now I don't know if it's gone or not, because it was always small. I think it's gone. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at about as close up as I can look, and I think it's gone. Yeah, either way, it was close enough. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we weren't going to look that close up on the robot in the first place. We were probably going to be about back here. And so, yeah, it was it was perfectly functional. All right, thank you. Cool. Yeah, no problem. All right, you guys. Any other questions or things that you want me to demonstrate? All good? At least for this class. At least for this one. All right. Very good. Uh, uh, I was just about to ask about the, um, since I'm going to be changing the uh, hands of the clock, how would I make it so that it's like one second before uh, midnight and then? Well, so you don't have a seconds hand. You've got an hour and a minute hand. So what happens is that even if it was one second before midnight, right, 
the minute hand doesn't move until the minute strikes. So you would just wait a second and then the minute hand would move up to the top and then the minute hand wouldn't move for the rest of your animation. So it would just tick oh, over one time. So wait, the minute that hand does never moves? Well, the, the minute hand doesn't move until the top of the minute. Right? So the second hand goes tick, 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 tick around the clock. When the second hand gets back up to the clock in the last second, when it hits, the minute hand moves with it to the next minute, and then it goes tick, 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 tick around, and then the minute hand moves to the next minute, etc. Okay. Um, sometimes on analog clocks, the hour hand slowly crawls between the hour, which is one way it can work. The other way it can work is by ticking directly from one hour to the next all in one go. But that's usually unlikely. Um, for the hour hand, it really does slowly drift. But since our animation is only a few seconds long, it doesn't really make any sense for the hour hand to move at all. OK. OK? Cool. All right, you guys. Then if that's all the questions for now, then we're all set. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And uh, if you guys have any further questions after that, feel free to ask. Otherwise, we're all done. Yep. Okay.